These cups have way too much glaze on them. I've never done this before on purpose. So I'm gonna load the glaze onto both of these so they will drip off. So we got some serious drippage right there. What is up guys? We have a new addition to the studio, which is super exciting. Today, we're talking about kilns. This video is sponsored by Advancer Kiln Shelves. More about them later. Thank you guys for joining me in the studio today. Today I wanna to do a video all about kilns because kilns are, oh, they are what bring life to clay. So without kilns, we really wouldn't be able to do the things that we do, have awesome, crazy, cool results, uh, and there are tons of different kinds of kilns. So I want this to be a brief overview of kilns. I thought it'd be a good time since we just got our new Scut 818 kiln. Uh, I'm gonna talk all about the different sizes of electric kilns, the different types of fuel that you use for kilns. Uh, what else are we gonna talk about? I get this question a lot. No, you cannot use your oven in your kitchen to fire ceramics that will not get hot enough. I mean, I think there are certain types of clay that you can like use in your oven up to a little bit, but they're not gonna be the type of functional ceramics that we wanna use. Uh, plus it really limits your possibilities. So without further ado, let's talk about some kilns. So brief overview of kilns. Obviously it's an insulated vessel that gets really, really hot. There's basically three different types of fuel that you're gonna use to get these kilns to hot temperatures. Number one, electric. That's, we have three electric kilns in our studio. Mo this is the most common, the most relatively inexpensive, and easiest way to get started would be electric. The next is gas. So any sort of propane, um, and this is gonna be really, more high fire. Typically, if you go to cone 10, then you're gonna have a gas kiln. It allows for reduction atmosphere, which we will talk about. And the last one is wood. So those are the three most basic. And I don't know everything about kilns. I know uh, a lot about electric kilns, and I know less about gas and wood, but I know enough to talk a little bit about it. Wood kilns are probably the least common. They you have to pretty much build them. You can't really just go out, as far as I know, and buy a wood kiln. So you have to build a wood kiln. Uh, usually they're large and they take a lot of effort to fire them. You typically need a crew of a few people. That's kind of the three different types of firing fuel. There's two different atmospheres that you are talk about in kilns. And the one would be reduction, which means that there's limited to no oxygen available in the firing at times, or oxidation. And so usually with electric kilns and with my kilns, we're always doing oxidation firings because there's oxygen present throughout the entire firing. And gas and wood kilns is what you would typically use for reduction atmospheres. And when you hear things like soda kilns, that's just added atmosphere into the kiln in the reduction atmosphere or uh, other things. Now there's also things called raku kilns, which is a shorter firing where you're firing quickly up to a lower temperature and then you take them out. And so there's a ton of different variety of kilns and I'm not gonna talk about all of them because I want this to be a fairly introductory basic. If you're like ready to go out and like buy your first kiln, I want this, I want you to end this video thinking like, okay, I have a little idea what I want out of a kiln now. The other big difference between electric, gas, and wood is the temperature in which you fire. So typically electric kilns are gonna kinda top out at around cone eight. Like you don't see a lot of people firing electric kilns up to cone nine or 10 or higher. And that's because it's really hard on the kilns. And so every, the higher you go, like cone eight, nine, 10, is gonna be a, a lot more harsh on the elements in the kiln that won't last as long. And you don't see that in gas and wood. And so in gas, it's common to go to cone 10 because there's no reason not to and it's a little easier to get it up there. It fires efficiently and inexpensively. And wood as well, you can fire the wood kiln up super, super hot, and so that's one advantage to having the wood kilns opposed to the electric. So electric is most commonly found in schools, in most production pottery areas, and that's because they're pretty easy and they're, pretty, they're relatively inexpensive. You don't need like a whole shed, you don't need to build out this whole thing. And so I wanna spend most of this time talking about electric kilns. All right, let's go into my studio really quick and talk about my kilns. Okay, so we have 
are three kilns in here. This is a Scut 1027. That's a Scut 818. And this is a Scut 1218. And so basically what the numbers mean is 1027 means that it's a 10 sided kiln. So there's 10 sides and that's kind of how you measure the, this area. And then it's 27 inches tall. So just like the 818 is going to be an eight sided kiln and it's going to be 18 inches tall. And then this one got 12 sides. So it's really wide, 18 inches tall. So talking about different brands of kilns, there's lots of different brands and a lot of people make really good kilns. I've always used Scut. Um, I think Scut makes great kilns. They have always been super helpful to me whenever I've had any issues. Uh, they're great customer service. They just have a really, I love their, the KMT touchscreen controller, this brand new thing. When that came out, that was really cool. It gives a bunch of options. There's a lot of kilns out there. I like Scut. I have three Scuts. They've all worked super well for me. They've all been easy to maintain, pretty easy to change the elements. So why do I need three different sizes of kilns? So this 1218, I use a lot for bisque kilns and that's the first firing up to a lower temperature and I can fit about a hundred to, depending on what they are, pots in here for a bisque kiln. This 12, this 1027, I can fit, I use typically for glaze firings and I can fit between 50 and 60 mugs or, you know, like two big bowls and 40 mugs or something like that. Both these kil these kilns can fit about that 60 range cup and that's just a lot. And so I felt like I was often getting to the point where I wanted to do more testing. I wanted to do more regular firing, but I didn't want to fire these bigger kilns empty just because I want to be efficient with my space and my energy consumption that I'm using. So I wanted to get this tester kiln so I could fire more often with less. So this one can fit about 20 mugs uh, or you know, a big bowl and 10 mugs or something like that. The other big reason that I wanted to get another size or it's nice to have different size kilns. I like to do different firing schedules. I like to fire sometimes up to cone six, sometimes to cone seven or eight. And then I also like to do slow cool schedules. So say I wanna do four different firings. I wanna do one to cone eight, one to cone seven, one to cone seven and slow cool it and one to cone six. Well, to fill one of these kilns, I would need 60, 120, 250 pieces to do those four different and fill them all up. So now what I can do is if I just wanna do like, you know, a small load that's slow cooled, I can do it in here and then I can do a bigger one to cone seven in here. So it just gives me more options. For you, if you're thinking about getting a kiln and what size kiln, I think that most people when you start out a 1027 or a 1218 is gonna be really big. Like it's gonna take you, unless you're really in this and you're making a ton of work, then it's gonna take you a long time to build up enough work to fire it and then glaze it and fire it again. And when you're, especially with to learn and to like test things, you wanna be, be able to fire a little more frequently. And I find that I still do that. I still don't just like pound out a ton of mugs and put them all in kilns and then just fire them. I like to like try new things and test different things and see how they work out and then manipulate the glazes or combos differently based on how that last one came out. And it's harder to do that when you have a bigger kiln. So the 818 and the first kiln that I had was like, it wasn't as big as the 1027, but it was slightly bigger than the 818. And that was a really good one. I could fire it, you know, a couple times a week and every time I get it full. So just think about that when you are deciding about the size of the electric kiln. So the smaller the kiln, the more often you're gonna be able to fire. All right, real quick, I wanna just say shout out to Advancer. You go to kilnshelf.com and these guys make amazing products for kilns. And these are just the best kiln shelves out there and they are the most expensive, but I've saved thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of pottery because of these shelves. And I'll tell you why. Yes, they are lighter and yes, they are smaller. They take up less room. But the real, the best reason why I love these shelves is because when you have a pot that drips totally off onto the kiln shelf, instead of sticking to the kiln shelf and ruining the bottom of your pot, the, the pot just pops right off. It's like amazing. And then the kiln shelves are super easy to clean off too. So I did my first firing in this kiln, I did on some old shelves because that's what I had. And I had a pot that dripped off, right? This is the bottom of that pot. It is ruined. 
It's cracked, it's got glaze fused to it. There's no saving this pot. If this would have happened on an advancer kiln shelf, the mug would have popped right off and I could have ground down the edges and I would have been able to save this mug. And this, I should be wearing, it does not come off. If this was an advancer kiln shelf, all you would do is just take this and it would just chink, pop it right off. So we are gonna do a glaze kiln in the new kiln with the new advancer shelves that we just got. And I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fire, I'm a little nervous to do this, but I'm gonna load the glaze onto two different pieces and I'll show it to you. And I, so, so much I'm gonna load it on that it will drip off. And I'm gonna fire one of them on one of these and show it to you. And then I'm gonna fire one of them on an advancer and show you guys the difference. So you'll get to see how this brand new electric kiln works too. All right, let's do it. Okay, so these two cups, I've just been glazing a bunch of stuff and we're almost ready to fill the kiln. So sandstone, sandstone around the whole thing and then we're gonna put like a layer pretty far down of Norse blue and then another layer of Aurora green. And I know that all those glazes together are pretty drippy and normally I'd only like layer them like a tiny bit on the top. So, should be interesting. So then I'll put one more layer on top after this. These cups have way too much glaze on them. Good boy. Good boy. As you can see, on this side we have the regular normal kiln shelf. And on this side we have the advancer kiln shelf. For this particular kiln load, we are going to do a slow cool to cone seven. And so this is the program, 150 degrees per hour up to 180, and then it'll be 150 up to 250, 400 degrees per hour up to 2012 degrees, and then 120 degrees up to 2262, and that's our top temp. The 99999 is a code that will let it drop then to 1700, and then it'll fire at 50 degrees an hour to 1600, 50 to 1500. So this is a slow cool schedule to cone seven. So we got, you know, a big bowl plus like 12 mugs or so, and they're all kind of testers because I haven't done a lot of slow cool in a while. And that's one reason I'm super excited about this kiln is just because I'll be able to do more different firing schedules without having to risk like 60 mugs. Like it's just to do new things in terms of the kiln program when you have a like, you know, that's weeks of work. If it all fails, then that would just be like really bad. So anyway, so we're gonna fire this right now. Then we'll be back tomorrow to see the finished results. So stick around for those. It's freezing outside here in Minnesota. It was negative 18 degrees Fahrenheit this morning, which is like, I'll put it in the screen, however many Celsius for all you international. It's supposed to be like negative 20 something this weekend. So whew, I'm thankful for my nice warm studio and my nice warm kiln. You guys ready to see this unloaded, what we loaded yesterday? All right, here we go. First kiln unloading in the brand new baby kiln. So I've been doing these glass coasters on the top of kilns a lot. Aren't those cool? And then little Minnesotas that will be magnets. So in here, got a bunch of little tester things. This was cone seven with a slow cool. So what I was hoping for was lots of micro crystal growth in there, which it didn't get quite as much as I want. And then I've been using this new clay and it just gets tons of pinholes. So I don't think I'm gonna use this clay again. This is like a mid fire. Yeah, not what you wanna see. I'll probably try and refire these, but these might just be garbage. All right, check this out. So we got some serious drippage right there and some not quite as bad. So I'm gonna show you guys the difference between the advancer and the normal. But first we got a couple of cool things here. One of my faves, slow cooled combos. Aurora green over sandstone. There's the Northern Lights. This one turned out really cool. Nice, beautiful. All right, 
You guys ready for this? Okay, so let's do this one first. So, so it's totally stuck to the shell, right? Like totally stuck, right? Won't, won't like hardly budge at all. Okay, so now I'm just gonna try and rip this thing off. Ready? <laughs> oh! All right, pulled up some of the kiln shelf, totally messed up the bottom of the mug. The clay is all messed up. That's gonna take forever. Normally what you would have to do, you'd have to take this, and you have to grind it down. Annoying, super annoying. Compared to this guy, ready? I didn't touch this at all. Boop, pulls right off all the clay. I mean, it still is gonna take a bunch of cleaning up, and but you can grind that off. The clay is still intact. It didn't break any of the bottom of the mug. And if you wanted to fire it again upside down, that's actually how I came up with that idea, is to fire stuff upside down. And then they also make this little thing right here, the glaze eraser, and this. See how easy that is? Oh my gosh. And now you're back in business. Boom. So that's just one of the many reasons why the kiln shelves are amazing. That Aurora green just turns brownish, looks like piece of wood or something, super cool. We got, ooh, that's sweet. That is actually on that new kind of clay. Micro crystal growth in there is really cool. It's kind of different, it doesn't look the same. Which I like it, but it's still got these little pinholes. That clay is just, what the heck? All right, friends, so that was me talking about kilns. Uh, what did I miss? I know I didn't cover everything that has to do with kilns. kilns like, they come in tons of different shapes and sizes. People build them, people buy them. The electric kilns are gonna be the most common and relatively affordable. Uh, once you start talking about like really expensive gas kilns, like I know Kurt Hammerly, if you don't follow him on Instagram, he does Cone 10 gas firing. His Blau kiln that he got for his studio was $50,000. So that's like on the top end. I mean, if you build a giant wood kiln, I'm sure those cost quite a bit of money too. So there's some exciting things coming. I'm hoping this year will be the year that the JTP Studios starts to dabble in gas-fired cone 10, possibly wood fire. I know I'm gonna uh, have some surprises coming with that stuff in mind. So stay tuned to the channel. You're gonna wanna see where we go because I've only done electric and I'm starting to put, feel like the next step for me to go in my pottery career would be what other kind of atmospheric firings can we experiment with? Because I love my work and I've gotten some crazy cool, interesting different results with different firing schedules and different clay bodies. Um, but the next, the next thing that I could do would be to start to think about wood firing, gas firing, uh, soda firing, doing reduction fires. And so just having all the different options, that's kind of like my dream for this studio over the next five to 10 years is to like, we could do gas firings, we can do wood firings, we can do electric firings, like to just keep experimenting, keep exploring, do it all. We'll see how far we get. So thank you guys all for the support. I just wanted to talk quick about the Patreon page because I have like a hundred and some patrons who their names are scrolling down right now and they have done so much to support the channel. They're like that constant monthly, they pay monthly and we send out pots every month to them. Right now we send out five pots per month. Um, so once you've been a patron for a little while, then we start to send you pots and they always get first access to our sales. So we always do a little pre-sale for the pots. So the next one that we have is March 15th. And so the patrons will get to see everything and decide if they wanna buy before. And then usually what we do is we have some coupons and discounts once we once the sale goes live. If there's stuff left over, then we'll give like a 30% or 40% discount to patrons. So you can usually make up that, you know, you can pay five, 10, 25 bucks a month if you want. Just wanted to say thank you guys all so much on the Patreon page. Thanks also to Advancer Kiln Shelves and Scut for everything that you have done making great kilns. Firing these things like crazy. Right now we got a bisque kiln full in there. We'll probably get a glazed kiln. So it's just, it's a good time. So thank you guys all. Appreciate everyone who bought pots in the last restock too. Thank you so much. Those should all be pretty much shipped out at this point. And our next one's on March 15th. So as always, if you haven't, like, subscribe, share, comment, all the things. We'll see you guys in the next video. Shh.